Welcome to Rajasabha Television, sir. Thank you. So we are in Karnataka and uh, of course it's going to be a tough battle uh, with the BJP and the JDS and Congress combined on the other side. Last time in 2014, 17 seats for the BJP. What are the prospects this time around? No, I think uh, the difference, as you know, last time was that uh, it was an anti-incumbency election. It was an election effectively th to throw out the UPA government. And um, we we were in at, in 2014, the BJP was a divided party in the sense uh, parts of the BJP had formed what is called the KJP. So the 2014 election, the BJP vote had got divided. And that is why we were at 17. If you look at 2009, we had actually crossed 20 seats. So um, the BJP's potential in Karnataka has always been 20 plus. Um, and so 2019, which is really a pro-incumbency election for Prime Minister Modi's five years, and those five years are in sharp contrast to the five years of Congress in Karnataka and the one year of Congress in JDS in Karnataka, uh, we believe uh, uh, that the BJP will do very well we believe that we will cross 20 very comfortably in terms of numbers of seats that the people will vote, us in, uh, vote for. And um, it could be as high as uh, 23, 25. So um, we are very comfortable, we are very confident that uh, the people of Karnataka will better the mandate that they had given to the BJP, a uh, united BJP in 2009. Uh, but using the this dual voting pattern of Karnataka in its favour saying that in the states the BJP was given hard mandate mm -hmm. than the opposition parties. Mm -hmm. So certainly Karnataka is vote, going to vote for a different party at the centre. Would you buy that? Uh, yes, I think the Karnataka, I mean they have, uh, currently the government is Congress and JDS in the state. So I think by their logic it should be clearly a BJP government in, in Delhi. No, notwithstanding all that, I think uh, notwithstanding the gimmickry that the Congress and the JDS resort to, the fundamental question that every voter in Karnataka, as indeed all the voters around the country, are faced with today is, who do you want as a leader of India in 2019? And who should lead India from 2019 to 2024? Uh, and the, the, the options are quite op you know, visible and uh, clear. It is either Prime Minister Modi, or it is Rahul Gandhi, or it is a mishmash of uh, uh, Mayawati or Mamata Banerjee, or whoever wants on Monday or Tuesday to be Prime Minister. So the people of India realize that after five years of rebuilding a shattered economy, after five years of creating a security environment that is much more decisive and stronger, after five years of addressing social issues including poverty head on, poverty and farmers, that they don't want to go back to the dark days of the UPA when the economy was in free fall, inflation was at sky high levels and the poor were suffering the most because of high prices. So, uh, notwithstanding all the spin that the Congress will give, that you know we will be uh, in Kong Karnataka votes this way, Karnataka votes that way, the Karnataka voter will vote exactly like every other voter in the country. That is for a better, prosperous India, for decisive, honest, non-corruptible leadership, and that is clearly Prime Minister Modi. But what uh, BJP hasn't gained much attraction there. What are the preparations in 2019? So, old Mysore traditionally, and uh, and this is what I think these elections will turn these conventional assumptions on his head. Uh, there has been a uh, conventional theory, political theory, that the old Mysore is a kind of a gud for the uh, Janta Dal and the uh, Devagoda family. And uh, I think the BJP will show this time that uh, those conventional sort of comfortable, dynastic, uh, territorial um, apportionment of the JDS will be turned on its head. We already proved that in 2014 by getting Pratap Simha, a BJP MP, a new MP to be elected in Mysore, which is again uh, uh, supposedly part of the old Mysore uh, fortress of the JDS. The JDS this time is contesting in five seats or six seats, uh, uh, six seats. And I am comfortable here today to make a prediction that they will probably got, get either zero or one. Uh, and even that one will be because of all the machinations and con, you know, the, traditional, uh, the traditional strategy of resorting to money distribution that the JDS is very good at, the JDS and the Congress. So JDS will find itself answering the same question that the voters are asking of everybody. Why should we vote? for a dynastic family, 
uh, that is really limited in, it, in its political reach and political influence and on top of it only tends to benefit members of its immediate family and its uh, cronies around it. You can see that the JDS that is supposedly standing for the Vokaliga community in Karnataka, a really proud uh, you know, uh, community of uh, people in Karnataka, have reduced themselves into a party that effectively does nothing for any other Vokaligas excepting for father, grandfather, son, son-in-law, daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law. So it, it is a, it is, this is 2019, the youth of Karnataka is the same as the youth in UP and Bihar. They are going to break out of this traditional linguistic community caste loyalties and say we want a more prosperous India, we want a more prosperous future for ourselves and we want political leadership that is basically not about giving favours to their own immediate family but will give opportunities to us. So I think you will be surprised that the, the, the old Mysore region will also vote effectively and decisively for breaking from the past and, or uh, breaking away from the JDS. So probably you hear the fact that the kind of arithmetic that the Congress party tried to play out in Telangana, the same thing is going to happen in Karnataka where the chemistry and arithmetic is not going to work? I think there is one uh, learning for all these regional parties. Uh, that the calculator and the Excel spreadsheet or arithmetic is not what drives electoral performance. Uh, the people of India are not blind or you know, immature or illiterate that they can be led to the polling booth by these kind of politicians that have done this for many, many years. But the voters are no longer like that. Today the voters are saying very clearly they are seeing the promise of a better future for themselves, for their communities, for their villages, for their towns and for their country. And so all this mathematics saying that caste A plus caste B plus caste C equals victory does not stack up against caste A plus caste B plus caste C ka ye game has been played for 65 years. And we are still where we are. And the only man who is breaking out of all this and saying Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas and is showing that he's trying very hard to do Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas is only one man, Prime Minister Modi. So I think leaders, because they have nothing else to do or no other political strategy, and that is what they've been doing for 65 years and their grandfathers have done it and their fathers have done it and their mothers have done it, will continue to play that same game. Let us create these alliances, let us create Mahagadbandan, let us create Mahamilavat and assume that the math will be more important than the emotional uh, desire of voters to seek change. And Prime Minister Modi has already proved it in UP, he has proved it repeatedly around the country that all these kind of caste combinations are okay in theory but effectively what people are wanting is more credible political leadership. You, Rebel Alwards, who's represented Bengaluru on uh, the map of India, frothing lakes, the decaying infrastructure, those have become the biggest issues for the voters here. Is there any roadmap with the BJP to solve these issues? No, look, and, and I think that is, uh, you're absolutely correct. Bengaluru is the most appropriate city to have a debate about whether you should vote for the Congress or a Congress JDS alliance or BJP. This is exactly the city you should come here and discuss this because. The last five years when Narendra Modi ji was cleaning up the Ganga, the Congress was creating burning lakes. When the last five years when Narendra Modi ji was building roads, fine world class roads, Narendra, uh, the Congress JDS government was creating uh, pothole roads. The last five years when Narendra Modi ji was talking about Swachh India, in Bengaluru we have had under the Congress and JDS uh, garbage crisis. This is exactly the city where we should talk about what Narendra Modi ji's governance philosophy and ideology is and what Congress's ideology and philosophy is. That where in the city 10,000 crores of public money are spent every year and over the last five years the Congress has spent 60,000 crores and the roads are still potholed, the garbage still stinks and there is rotting garbage all over the city. And we have a situation where lakes and water bodies are burning because of uh, effluent dumping and encroachment. So this is exactly the question that is to be asked. And the answer, is there a solution? Yes, there is a solution. And the solution is that this government that is hiding behind this negative plus negative 
of negative of JDS plus negative of uh, Congress that took the mandate away in 2018 through this unholy alliance should be thrown out. And then effectively with the central government under Narendra Modi and a BJP government in the state and a BJP government in Bengaluru, we will really fix the problems of the city that have been exploited for the last seven years. So yes, I think this is, I'm glad you are here. And I'm glad that you raised this issue. And this is precisely the issue that the voters should really hear. That uh, take a look at what the Congress has done to Bengaluru in the last five years and take a look at what Narendra Modi has done to the rest of the country in the five years. Lastly and most imperative point is what we're planning in Karnataka. Of course, you've been talking about Prime Minister Modi, no, but... No, the ele no, no, electoral plank is very simple. To every voter, the electoral uh, point is very simple. This is a pro-incumbency election. This is an election where we are saying, look at BJP's five years of governance. Look at our track record on corruption. Look at our track record on subsidies to the poor. Look at our track record on handling the farmer's issues. Look at our track record of determination, sincerity, and trust that we have built with the people. You look at all of our track record, and you compare that to 10 years of UPA, you compare that to the five years of the Congress in Karnataka, and you take a decision. Take a decision on which one of these do you want to be leading the country in the next five years. There is absolutely nothing more that we are saying. We are absolutely going to people and saying, here is our record. Compare our record to what the record has been of the Congress for 65 years or the last 10 years or the last five years in Karnataka. And you take a decision. Absolutely. Point well again on that note. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was good.